I'm Will Mears with Mears Lawn and Landscape, and today I want to talk to you about Hydrowise controllers. If you're watching this video, then clearly you're either interested in or have already purchased a Hydrowise controller. We strongly recommend Hydrowise controllers. Since they've come out in the last few years, they are incredibly efficient and they help you save money as well as water, which are both are important in this day and age that we live in. So for the next few minutes, I'm going to show you guys all the ins and outs of a little tutorial of what I like to tell everybody about how they work and what you need to know and how to run the actual controller. So first thing, on your phone or tablet or whatever you want to use, you should download the HydroWise app, or if you're on your computer, go to HydroWise.com. When we install the controller, you will receive an email that invites you to use the controller. Often it goes to people's spam folder, so if you do not see it, please check your spam folder. If you really don't see it after that, then we can always resend it, although typically, again, it's in your spam folder. So once you get into HydroWise, then you log in, and if you receive that email, then it's going to prompt you to set up an account. And if you're like most Americans, you're going to set up the same username and password you have for everything in the world. So, then we're going to use our friend here. We're already all set up, and this is assuming that we've already got everything set up for you, which we will. We'll make sure everything's set up appropriately. So, I'm using my good friend Sandy Curtis to show exactly how it would work. So, Sandy has 10 zones. Uh, first thing I would point out is her status. I can see from remote, remotely, even though I'm actually at my house right now, I can see that her house, it, the controller, has good status. So everything's good to go there. She has good internet connectivity, so that's good. If for some reason there was something wrong, you would see, I'm going to, we'll pick Peggy Beal, and you would see it says no internet connection. So clearly that's not working. So going back to Sandy's, she has 10 zones. And her first zone is a landscape sp uh, mist or spray zone, and it just goes accordingly, and then all these icons are different, and it shows that the remaining nine zones are grass. And there's a little description as well as a number. Often what we like to do as well is put a description of what type of zones, so meaning rotors or mists or sprays, which are the same thing, or if you are really have an efficient system, then you have MP rotators, which are slightly different. They all have different water requirements, which I'm not going to really go over a lot in this video because this is really about HydroWise. So, long story short though, this is your dashboard. Again, we talked about your controller status, so that's good. Uh, the next thing, let's talk about how your house is going to become a weather station. So the way this works when we set it up is that your house will be averaged, and they've changed this over the years, but they're going to average two or three locations around your house. So for example... Where Sandy lives in Olathe, they would average a couple of high schools or maybe a hospital, an airport, something like that. And they're going to average two or three that AccuWeather, this is through AccuWeather, they're going to average two or three of those and they're going to show exactly what her location is. So for fun, what I like to tell people, the only time that's really a problem is let's say it's May and it's the middle of May and it's raining at the hospital, but not raining at the airport, but it is raining slightly at a high school up the street. So there's a chance at Sandy's that it could be either way. The reality is that that's in May and it's probably the middle of a really, really rainy week and it's probably been wet and 70 degrees. So you should just delay it, which we'll go over in a minute. You should just suspend all the zones for the remainder of the week. So uh, that is going to lead us into the watering triggers, which we'll also go over in a minute. Let's talk about the delaying and suspending zones. So this gear icon is super helpful. And what you do is you click on it, and it has a couple different options here. You can run all zones, which again, the interface for this is the same as what you're gonna see on your tablet and your phone. It would just be a little bit smaller screen, but you can do the same, same functions from your computer, or tablet, or phone. So you go to this gear icon, and I could cl click run all zones. And then it allows me to see all the zones, and if for some reason I don't wanna run her landscape, I unclick it, and then I can hit run now. And I'm gonna immediately stop that, and I'm gonna hit stop all manually started zones because Sandy's wondering why it's running. So there's that, those are all those uh, zones right there. That's helpful, let's say that she had flowers in this zone right here. And she says, you know, it's three o'clock in July, it's the middle of the day, and I really want to just run, let's say she had two zones of flowers she wants to run and she could select the zone she wants to run and hit run now. On the opposite end, if you want to suspend all zones, you would do the opposite and you would hit suspend all zones. Again, going back to that uh, week in May where it's raining all week or maybe you're expecting a lot of rain and you don't want to water it or for whatever reason you have construction or something like that, you can delay all the zones 
or certain ones. Again, you can unselect them or, or select them. And it says suspend all of them until from now until the end of the, uh, this. I'm making this video in October of 2021. So if I wanted to do till the end of the week, then it would say the 23rd. Let's say I was expecting a lot of rain or construction. It says, okay, now you're all suspended. Now, if you'll notice, these were a bright green. Now they're kind of a grayish green. If I want to change them back to a bright green, meaning that they're going to run, let's say I said, oh, okay, these, let's say I say these four zones in the middle are where the construction is going to be at. It's in the middle of the backyard, for example. What I can do is I can click on each icon and I can cancel the suspension. Now those two zones will run as scheduled as well as these zones. And I'm going to actually do that to all of them and I'm going to unclick all of them. And again, you can do the same thing from your phone, computer, or tablet. So pretty straightforward. Most of this is pretty intuitive. It does take a little bit of practice to kind of get the hang of it. And most of these functions people don't really know about until we uh, inform them of it. So there we go. We have all those unclicked. Now we're back to normal. So Sandy will never know that I did that. Um, so next thing, I think we've got this pretty well covered. Uh, we're, we are going to show one more function. Let's say we just wanted to run one zone. Let's say it's this zone. We can hit the play button. And then it will say, how long? Oh, I want to run it for 12 minutes. And I can hit start. You can see at the icon right here, I'm going to click out of this. You can see that the icon turns to blue. And if she's sitting outside right now, she's wondering what the heck's going on. And good to go there. So now it's turned off. I just hit the little stop button that, that was there. Um, so that's how you turn them on and off. Okay, now I want to go over the zones and programs. So these are where you actually edit a lot of the information. <clears throat> and this is usually kind of the meat of the conversation here. HydroWise has a lot of functions, and I will say overall, they tend to complicate things. So in general, I would ignore all of this area down here. That's related to watering triggers, and unless you're really, really intense, which most people aren't, you really don't need to worry about that. What I want people to worry about is this right here. Currently, zone one is set to run for five minutes. Zone 2 is set to run for 15 minutes, etc. And it just continues down. So if I want to edit that, and I say, you know what? Zone 5 by the mailbox, I actually want to edit it. It's really hot. Let's pretend it's summer, and it's starting to get kind of warm in June. Instead of 15 minutes, I just type in 20, and then I hit okie dokie. Oh, never mind. I actually had the wrong zone. I want to change that back to 15. Click Next. Right in 15, all good to go. Again, ignore a lot of this stuff. There, there really is too much information. For enthusiasts, sure, that's great, but even in my own yard, I would not be that terribly concerned about individually doing some of these things. I would be more concerned about the, the time or frequency, no, I'm rather duration of each zone. So, that's how you edit the time. That's the most important thing. Again, click on this little pen and paper, and that's how you edit each zone. Click on that, you know you're on zone eight next and do that. That's the most important thing if you take away from this is how to do that as well as the next function. The next function, I go back to the top and I click on program start times. And then hers, again it's October so we're not watering a lot in this video, it's October so I have hers set to 5 a.m. on Tuesday and Friday. Let's pretend that next May she's got it set to the same thing but then we roll right into June and it's time to add more water. So not only can I add more time to each zone, but I can also say, let's add Sunday. Okay, it's July, I want to add a Saturday. Or it's really, really hot. It's late July, August. I can add as many days as I want. So that's a good way to do it. And then unclick them accordingly and hit OK. I have to say it out loud, but if they're blue, that means it's going to water. If there's no fill of blue, then it's not going to water. If you want to add watering start times, then you can add watering start times. So for example, let's say it was September and you wanted to seed. Seeding is best to water multiple times a day. So for example, three times a day. Often we set it for 8 a.m., noon, and 3, 3 or 4 in the afternoon. So that would be three start times. So I would edit this one. I would click on the edit button. It asks me all these things. I say, that's nice. Let's go to 8 a.m., and then I hit OK. Oh, never mind. I already did this wrong. Let's click on every single day because we're doing seed and we want it every day. And it's all zones. Oh, never mind. I want to change that. Let's go back here and hit next. And I say, you know what? I want to do selected zones. And I want to I want to do every zone except for the front landscape mist because I don't need to do the landscape. I'm only doing grass. Again, this is a real life situation. I'm doing all the zones except for zone one, which again is landscape. I can do the same thing. Let's do this for new, uh, yep, noon, 
and every day and I'm going to do selected zones and we do this to a lot of houses and I'll tell you what the Hydrawise controller really helps out with making this to where everybody can be on the same page of exactly what's going on. 3 p.m. every day so this is a very realistic seeding situation. If you don't ever plan on seeding your yard, which is rare if you have an irrigation system, then don't worry about it. So when you look at this, you say, okay, everything's watering, but what about the landscape zone? Add yet one more and say, all right, I only want the landscape zone to go Tuesday and Thursday, just like it's set up before I do all of this rigmarole. I can still set it for 5 a.m. and I can do selected zones and I can only click one zone. You could do as many as you want. I've had houses where I've had up to 10 of these, and it's, it can get real intense real fast, but basically with this, you'd have multiple different start times. Uh, for now, I'm going to go back to normal, so I'm going to trash these. I'm going to trash this one. Are you sure? Yes. And I cancel it, so let's say it's been a month and you're done seeding, and you're like, all right, I don't want to do any of that. I get back to normal. I click on this again, the edit button, go back to next, and I hit apply to all zones. And in about one second, we're going to be back to normal of where we started at the beginning of this conversation. So that's the most important thing is understanding how to edit the time. Again, the piece of paper, and you would click next and go to the time as well as program start times and understanding everything in here. We typically don't encourage pre-configured schedules. You need to customize it. Don't do pre-configured schedules. That's not something we typically encourage. Now, the most fun part, in my opinion, of smart controllers is the watering are the watering triggers. So we set these to default, which is basically what you're looking at now. And we like to do it to where you can, you can change it, obviously. All this stuff, you guys can change all of this all the time, but this is what we encourage. So as I go through these, I'm going to give you a couple real-life examples of how I've learned to set these exactly to this example. And again, the default settings that I have set here are not what HydroWise does. But again, HydroWise is a nationwide company. It's not out of Kansas City. So... Here's what we're doing. So, for example, don't water when today's forecast is less than 60 degrees. That is important in April or October when it's 55 degrees for the high, or even worse, if it's snowing. If it's 33 degrees for the high, you don't need to water your yard. That's silly. And I've actually seen that many times, and it's, it's quite silly. So, you can change this. So, let's say that Sandy had seed down, and she had put down late in the year. I can change this. And I can change it to whatever I want. And we encourage people to change it. You're at your house. Please change your settings if you feel the need to do so. Again, these are our default settings. We feel like they're a good recipe for success. But we do try to make it as simple as possible. Feel free to change it. The nice thing about HydroWise is, as you can see, we can see all of our customers. And we can see exactly what's going on. So it's no problem for us to uh, help you. We encourage that you take it upon yourself to work on it and, and monitor your yard, you're going to get the best results because again, you guys are there all the time. We're only there when we're actually servicing your property. So don't water when today's forecast is less than 60 degrees. Next item, don't water 30% less when the forecast is less than 70. So they're going off high temperature. So let's say the temperature is 65 tomorrow it, and we're going to see this in a minute. The watering trigger is going to make it to where it waters 30% less. Some of the default settings that they give you are different, but we feel like instead of watering for 15 minutes, it would water for 10 minutes feels more appropriate when it's, say, 65 instead of 70. So then, again, this is all designed for set it and forget it. This is designed to where if you really don't touch your controller, it will do a lot of it automatically. It might not be perfect, but it's going to be better than just forgetting about your controller and letting your yard die, die and get fried from the, the lack of water. So water 30% more when today's forecast is above 90 degrees. I like to take humidity out of the equation. A lot of people always say, oh, the humidity is horrible, but the reality is not a lot of us really know what the percentage of humidity is. So to me, let's just look at our phone and make our life simple and look at, okay, if it's 91 degrees or 95 degrees, instead of it watering for 15 minutes regular, it's going to water for 20 minutes. So that's a good one there. And again, you can edit these, both of these, as well as the next page, you can edit these by clicking on any of these. Let's say I wanted it to be 50%. Okay, instead of it watering for 15 minutes, it's gonna water for, oh gosh, 27 and a half. No, wait, that's wrong, 23. So, yeah, you can do that if you want. Uh, feel like it's a little excessive to jump up that much over a couple of degree difference, personally. Again, you can change all of these. This one's really good. Don't water when the chance of rain is higher than 80%. To me, this is an extremely valuable one. This is where 
a rain sensor, which is old school, is not as effective as a hydrowise controller. So for example, currently as I'm making this video, it's a Tuesday. Let's say tomorrow morning, it's not, but let's say Sandy's is set to go at tomorrow morning at, at Wednesday at 5 a.m. If there's a 90% chance of rain at 3 in the afternoon, it won't water. It's predicting the weather. As opposed to reacting with it with a rain sensor knowing that it has rained, this controller can tell you that it's, it is going to rain. And again, in the summer, you might want to change this to 90%. Let's say you have seed and you've seeded in early September. Maybe raise that a little bit. On the opposite end, let's say that it's uh, May or uh, October and you're not really worried about it as much. Maybe change it down to 50%. You know, it's it's totally up to you guys. We like to try to pick just round numbers. To me, 80% sounds like a good amount. If it's above 80%, it's probably going to rain. Don't water when today's forecast wind speed is higher than 30 miles an hour. That one's very beneficial. It's pretty rare that we actually use that one, but there are days throughout the year where it can be a little windy. Okay, so then as you go to the top, there's actually two sections. The next one is weather station adjustments. Sorry, always leave these on. They tell you about all the watering triggers, just leave those on. Okay, and again, you can toggle these on and off. If Let's say you're like, you know what, I want it to rain no matter what, then either, whether whatever the percentage is, then let it, let it do its thing. So you can turn them on and off. Okay, next one, don't water when in the last 24 hours the rain falls higher than an inch. Using this scenario, this is actually similar to a rain sensor. Let's say it has rained an inch in the last 24 hours, it will not water. If you want to be more conservative, I've seen customers do it at half an inch or even 0.2 inches or 0.1. Personally, I like an inch. Next one would be don't water in the last four, it, when, when the wa last four days rain falls higher than three inches. I have a really good example for this one. The default setting for this is a little bit higher and I like to set it to about three inches. So I use the example of mid July or, or a summer rain. Let's say it's Sunday night, it's the beginning of the week and it rains really, really hard. And this does happen quite often and you get five inches of rain in an hour. And the reality is half inch to an inch act actually absorbed into the ground. A lot of it went straight down the street and went into the, into the creek. So the problem is, yes, the next day and maybe Tuesday, as well as maybe Wednesday, it doesn't need water, but by the end of the week, Friday or Saturday, you're gonna need water again. So to leave this too long at say seven days, if you get a three inch storm, and again, it's the middle of summer, by the end of the week, you're gonna need water again because most of it has run, run off into the street. So just be careful with that one. Don't let that be too high of a number. So those are the watering triggers, and those are incredibly valuable, and to me, that's worth all the extra cost of, of a smart controller. They're incredibly helpful. For that reason, I don't encourage that people get a rain sensor. I only have a couple of houses that have both. It's very nice, and it is gonna be incredibly accurate, but it's kind of overkill in my opinion. Then we get into controller settings. A lot of this is really not terribly fun. There's all sorts of things. It does say weather station and it's going to pull up all these things on here and it's going to say that she's a selected weather station. I'm not going to dwell on that one. Uh, but it does say a weather station of where she's actually selected. Uh, she has a free selected weather station as well as she has personal ones or a free airport. But again, when we set it up, you're selected to a free weather station, a virtual weather station. It has other things that really typically don't, I wouldn't encourage that people use a lot of. It says everything's good to go. You can change the name. Don't encourage that. It does help us to have the name on your controller. Last thing is reports. There are all sorts of reports, but remember I talked about how it's October and how things could be a little less this week. As you can see on Thursday for Sandy's controller, she has reduced watering due to temperature. So that's related to the, um, the high is going to be less than 70 degrees. So she's going to see 30% reduction in water. So instead of it running for 15 minutes, it's gonna run for 11. So that's very helpful. Um, okay, and then you can see, so if for some reason we came by and you're worried if something's running or not or anything like that, you can see what, the, what things are going. So just a minute ago, I can see that I ran these manually for one minute at the beginning of this video. So it's quite, quite helpful and it does tell you a lot of different information. I can see what we've got set up for next week. We've got a Monday and Thursday. A lot of different things going on there. So that's the ins and out of a smart controller. Um, there's lots of things to know. That's the gist of it. Um, a lot of good things to be able to understand. If you guys have any questions, of course, you can always reach out to us, but this gives you a good overview of exactly what's happening. Thank you, and we appreciate your business very much.